Have you gone into an SAT lately and walked out feeling shell-shocked over the math? Trust me, you are not alone. Laura here with STP guys, and in this video today, my team and I have come together to hand select five low-key tricky math problems that we know students struggle with and ultimately get wrong. We wanna make sure you feel more prepared going into your next test, so make sure you watch this video from start to finish and don't miss any of the five problems. At the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you my favorite SAT math problem as of late. Now, do me a favor and comment below and let me know what you personally have been struggling with on the SAT math. And as always, if you're new to this channel or if you haven't yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button and notification bell below so you don't miss out on any helpful content from us to help you master the SAT. All right, let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Inesh Rai and I'm a tutor with the Strategic Test Prep team. Today, we're going to be approaching a relatively difficult math question that was just added to Blue Book exam number three. Since this question is relatively new, we might be seeing this topic appear more and more on future SATs. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. In the given equation, P is a positive constant. The sum of the solutions to the equation is 20 over three. What is the value of P? So, I'm going to highlight this final portion here, what is the value of p? We need to be mindful that in the end, we should have a value for p. And so I know this equation up top can look a little bit intimidating, but we have a shortcut when it comes to sum of solutions. Negative b over a is an equation we can use for quadratics to find the sum of the solutions. And so looking at the first part, 3x plus p is not in quadratic form. That is a linear component. 5x squared minus 45, that's a quadratic, and 2x squared minus 16x plus 6p, also a quadratic. So let's use negative b over a. 5x squared minus 45, negative b over a would just equal negative 0 over 5, which is simply 0. Now for 2x squared minus 16x plus 6p, if we do negative b over a, we get negative, negative 16 over 2. And so that's just negative, negative 8, which is 8. However, we still have one more component, which is our 3x plus p. So 3x plus p equals 0, since it's one of our solutions. Let's isolate the variable x. So 3x equals negative p, x equals negative p over 3. And so the question says that the sum of the solutions is equal to 20 over 3. So we can set up the equation negative p over 3 plus 8 equals 20 over 3. And so personally, I wouldn't want to solve this with the fractions. So let's multiply the entire equation by 3. In doing so, we get negative p plus 24 equals 20. Now we just have to solve for p. Negative p equals negative 4 p equals 4. So what seemed like a really intimidating question was extremely simplified just by using one little equation. So come test day, make sure you have negative b over a in your mind for our quadratic sum of solutions. Hope this was helpful and good luck everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Maya. I am a incoming second year at UCLA. I'm studying psychobiology on a pre-med track. And I've been tutoring with the team now for over a year, almost a year and a half, and yeah, I love it. So today I am going to be doing question 21 from practice test four, the PDF version, and it is in module two. All right, guys, so we now have the equation in front of us. So it reads negative x squared plus bx minus 676 equals zero. In this given equation, b is a positive integer, and then it also says the equation has no real solution, what is the greatest possible value of b? So quite honestly, all of this information is crucial. Off the bat, I'm noticing that our equation isn't in factor form, it is in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. And it says that the equation has no real solution. So that means that the discriminant 
is less than zero. It is negative, which is b squared minus 4ac. That is derived from the quadratic formula. And there's a lot of rules that come with the discriminant. But as I said, this says it's no real solution. So that means that this is less than zero. It's negative. From here, I notice that we have our values for a, b, and c. So we can plug those in to our discriminant. I see that a equals negative one. We don't know what b is, right? And then c equals negative 676. Makes sense that we don't know b since that's what we are solving for. So now we can plug in these values. So b squared minus four times negative one times negative 676, just like that, is less than zero. And if I quickly do some math, I get that b squared is, and then this right here, all multiplied to minus 2,704, which is less than or equal to zero. From here, I'm just going to move this right over here. We can now solve for b by adding this side. So we get b squared is less than 2,704. Now let's square root to get b by itself and doing some math real quick. The square root of 2,704 is 52. So b has to be less than 52. And it is asking what is the greatest possible value of b? So, I mean, that would be just 51 then. So, the answer to 21 is going to be B equals 51. And that's it for this question. So, if you have any questions on it, feel free to comment down below. If you're finding this video helpful so far, show us some love. Hit the like button below. Hi, guys. My name is Maria, and I'm a tutor here at Strategic Test Prep. Today, I'll be explaining one of the hardest math questions in Blue Book Test Number 4, which includes um, quadratics and their different forms. So, yeah, let's do it. In the xy plane, a parabola has a vertex 9, negative 14 and intersects the x-axis at two points. I'm just going to draw that out here so we have a visual say the 9 comma negative 14 is right here and it says it intersects the x-axis at two points okay so since we know the parabola is upward facing since it intersects the x-axis at two points we actually also know the value of a well not exactly the value but we do know that a is greater than zero which is very important so just remember that Good. So now um, it says the parabola is written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. Which of the following could be the value of a plus b plus c? Okay, so we need to find a way to get our equation equal to ax squared plus bx plus c just to get the values of a, b, and c. But the only thing we have here is the coordinates of the vertex. So we need to use vertex form. We need to equal vertex form to standard form. So vertex form is actually y equals ax minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is the vertex. So we're to plug in 9 comma negative 14, it would, it would look like this. y equals a x minus 9 squared minus 14, right? So if we expand that, it would look y equals a x squared minus 18 x plus 81 minus 14. Let's just multiply the a to everything. That would look y equals a x squared minus 18 a x plus 81 a minus 14 so now let's color code because now it is in the same form so if we look at a here it is well a but if we look at b it is negative 18 a right and if we look at c c is 81 a minus 14. so remember the question is asking us for a plus b plus c which is actually a plus 
negative 18a plus 81a minus 14. And notice something about this uh, equation, which is that it is in terms of a. The only variable we have here is a. And what do we know about a? Well, we know that it is greater than 0 or positive. So if we were to set this equation equal to any of the answer choices we have in here, um, negative 23, negative 19, negative 14, and negative 12, whichever one of those answer choices is correct, will have to give us a positive A, right? And in this case, the answer is actually option D, which is negative 12. And why is it option D? Well, because the rest of the options give us a negative A. And option D is the only one that gives us a positive A, which is what we want, right? Okay. So now that we solved this problem, I think the biggest tip I can give you is honestly to memorize the different forms of the quadratic equation, which include standard form, factored form, and vertex form. Knowing these forms would definitely make uh, hard questions simpler in the actual test. So yeah. Bye guys. Hi guys, my name is Puneet. I'm an undergraduate student of economics in India, and I have been a tutor with STP for more than six months now. Today, I'll help you all figure out the easiest solution to one of the trickiest system of linear equation problems. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so you have the problem right there on the screen. It says, for each real number r, which of the following points lies on the graph of each equation in the xy plane for the given system? What I'm simply going to do is I will plug both of these equations in my graphing calculator and see what do I get. So I've already done that for the first one. I'm quickly going to put in the second one as well. It's 10x plus 15y equals 35. Now, you all must be quick enough to notice that both the lines coincide with one another. So the next thing that we have to do is to look at the x coordinate of the x intercept of my system of linear equations. I can see that it is 3.5. When I come back to my option choices, I see that it is only in option choice B that I have 7 over 2, which translates to 3.5. None of the other option choices in their x coordinate have 7 over 2. And that just makes B the correct answer. Hope it helps. Okay, now that we're done solving the problem, I want to let you all know that the reason why I picked this particular question is because many of my students have had a hard time navigating through such question types. And trust me, this is the easiest way you can approach such questions from the system of linear equations. Thank you so much. All right, what's up guys? Laura here. I promise you I would also throw in a problem is the last one. I'm excited about this one because there are multiple questions just like this in the question bank and there are questions showing up on the SAT that I heard are similar to this. So anyways, what you're going to want to do on these is you're going to want to take this English phrase and translate it into an equation. Is means equals. So we're literally going to write it as A equals. Now careful with less, okay? If it's 70% less, that means it's 30% of B. So I'm going to put 0.3 b and then we're going to go ahead we're going to check out this next one it says the number c is 80 percent greater than a okay now if they say 80 percent greater we're going to use 1.8 that's a markup so we're at 100 percent of a when we have the full amount of a we're going to add 80 percent more onto that so that's why our other equation is going to be c equals 1.8 a and then they said the number C is how many times B? Okay, when you look at the question, what I want you to ask yourself is, what letter is excluded now? And it looks like they completely got rid of A. So I'm gonna do the same thing with some substitution. I'm going to get rid of A. We know A equals that, so I'm gonna put it in right there. So we have C equals 1.8 times 0.3B. Now it's just a matter of doing a simple computation with my calculator, seeing what 1.8 times 0.3 is, and I get C equals 0.54B. 
all right, so when they say the number C is how many times B? Well, it's 0.54 times B, so your answer is going to be 0.54. Easy peasy. All right, guys, so that's it for our five low-key tricky math problems. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want more tips, tricks, and strategies, then I would definitely recommend you sign up for our math self-paced course. I'm gonna link it up here right now. We have exclusive video lessons that you can't get on YouTube or anywhere else. And my team and I walk you through all the important concepts you need to know to be successful on the SAT math. So go check that out. And until next time, guys, happy prepping.